Yeah. Oh, we're off. We're live. We're off. Hey, it's Chris Homestead and Hardway. And today we want to talk about a Sears model 919.75 hammer mill that was donated to us by Candy Auction Company in Thomasville, North Carolina. And we really do appreciate it, more than you'll ever know. And I want to also thank Johnny Sharp for bringing it to us and making it all happen. Thank you, John. Okay, Sears 919.75. Now, I researched this thing online. I had other people research it. I talked to every old fellow I could find here to run a hammer mill, and I kind of came to a conclusion. I'm probably the last one that's ever run one. But when I was young, the only two things I knew about the hammer mill was that you had to put a twist in the belt when you hooked it to the tractor. And if you burnt the belt off of it, then it was going to beat the brakes off of you. He called it, didn't he? Ah, oh, sorry about that. It might be a little interruption on the phone call. But I didn't know which way to turn the thing. I didn't know how fast to turn it. And you couldn't really find that information out. And right off the bat, because these were things that I kind of had a hard time finding. The common sense told me which way to turn it. I thought. But I didn't know how fast to turn it. I didn't know how to gear it. I didn't know how to do anything. And we changed it from running on a flat belt to running on two V-belts. But just because this may be the whole reason you're watching this video, it turns counterclockwise. On this side, it turns counterclockwise. And best I can tell, somewhere around 2200 RPM is what you need the main shaft turning at. Now what I did here, I went with, I think this is a 20 inch fully to a three and three quarter, which gave me 2200 here with the PTO shaft on the tractor turning at 400 which means I didn't have to run the tractor wide open because the tractor's sitting right here while you're using it. It's a little quieter if you don't have to have it full PTO speed. We're running it with a TO30 or TO or 35 Madison Ferguson, one or the other. Both of them seem to pull it fine. Uh, I understand it was being pulled with a Super A farm haul on a flat pulley. I didn't want to run the flat pulley. Like I said, what we had growing up was a flat pulley, and it was kind of a pain in the butt. Plus, I found out that the belt was about $300 if I bought a belt. I don't have a tractor with a flat pulley drive. I could get one. We thought about putting a power unit on it, putting a lawnmower motor, 22-horse lawnmower motor. We thought about putting an electric motor, especially when I thought it turned the other way. We would have had to put an electric motor on it. But it turns the right way to use the PTO on the tractor. And so far, I like this setup pretty good. I like it better. Most of them you see on YouTube have electric motors. But an electric motor big enough to pull this would have required running a new circuit, bearing wire. I would have had more money in it than doing it this way. And we've got plenty of tractors. Um... I built this skid pretty heavy. I want it good and heavy so nothing would move. One thing I didn't do when I built the skid I wish I had done, I wish I'd put pockets under the bottom for the forklift to slide into. Because it's very annoying to get on and off of the forklift. And it will fall off. It uh, It's kind of not, the weight's not centered. Because when I started to build it, the original idea was to put a three-point hitch on it. Where you backed up and hooked to it like a bush auger and picked your shaft up and you can move it around with the track. And that could still be done. And may still get done. I will show you what the inside of it looks like. Because this one is a little different than normal. Instead of having hammers, it's got teeth. And that's kind of unusual. It's the first one I've ever seen like this. But I will tell you, it works just as good. We've tried whole corn on the cob. We've tried corn stalks. We've ground sorghum with it. We've ground rye with it. We've ground uh, shell corn. We've made feed out of everything you can make it out of. 
And those teeth, they need turning around. It still does, huh? But the beauty of this thing is there's no part on it that can't be fabricated in any reasonable sheet metal shop. Or like these teeth can be cut out on a plasma table. If you've got the machine, you can pretty well keep it going. Somebody local can help you keep it going. Like that burr mill that we've got that's broke. If you watch our videos, you know I have a burr mill we've been using for years. I need a plate for it. You can't really get them. I've got some I think we can modify and make work, maybe. Not sure yet. i got to give them to the machine shop, but I can't do it myself. Anything to this, I can pretty well do it myself. Now, I have more stuff than the average guy. I mean, we run this shop, but I can keep this going. Between this and a couple of good friends, we can keep this going. But I'm entirely more satisfied with this than I was the, the, the output on it. The amount of, of feed you can make in the amount of time. I'm way more satisfied with this than I was the bird meal. And I am the little Chinese meal we've got over here. And then just hammer is the way to go. And I knew growing up that's what we had. But if you mix the supplement, you can mix the supplement and have it blow feed out of this pipe over here. Actual feed, you don't have to do anything else too. But there's a lot of salt in that supplement, the mineral mix, and it'll eat it up. And I don't think this has ever had any run through it. And it's always been under the shelter. From what I understand, it was bolted to the floor inside the building. And they had a hole cut in the wall to run the belt through. Uh, I know somebody's going to say something about the safety of the pulleys and all this stuff. And they're probably not the safest thing in the world. But let's face it, if you grew up on a farm, a real working farm, you understand that everything out here is key. You got to use a little bit of common sense and caution. And I mean, I do worry about the, about the dog running up and sticking his nose in it or something, and I may do some kind of guard, but I've been around stuff like this my whole life. It doesn't even phase me. I mean, it's got my fingers. Uh, don't even know but one or two people is missing anything. And both of them, either, they either cut their fingers off, saw with me, or pressed them off in a press brake. They two people pressed them off in a press brake. Anyway, getting off course. Another thing I will tell you, uh, if you see how big the holes are in this grate here, that almost makes cornmeal. I don't, I guess the smaller hole plate would make actual cornmeal uh, for making hush puppies. And I haven't tried the bigger plate yet, really. We ran some whole cob corn through it with this small plate. Just a couple of years to see what it would do. And it pushed you through it. I mean, it tried to load a little bit, but it, it ran on through it. And another little kind of good idea I, I thought I had anyway. You need a boom bag. It's really dusty, so you need something to kind of funnel it into your barrel. So we grind it right straight into a barrel. This There's a fan in here that pulls it out the bottom and up and down. But that's just a pair of blue jeans. The legs off a pair of blue jeans. And I spray painted them black to stiffen them up. Had something else, I tell you. This thing has an air intake right here. This is a perfect little mouse house. And I, I hate to be gruesome, but the truth is, you need to kind of make some noise, kick this thing a couple of times when you're hooking it up. And still, as soon as when you cut the tractor on, give it a few minutes before you put any corn through it and let it blow the mice out. Because I guess what they do is they hold on as long as they can. And then, you know, about that deep in the barrel of corn, it'll turn loose and it'll make you feed you bad. It'll make you feed you wrong. Find out the hard way to do it. So you need, need to let it run a minute and de-mouse before you start, uh, start making your feed. But that was some things, some serious questions I had about trying to set it up to run off something the size of You the didn't belt. tell them that it does like 250 pounds in 20 minutes. Oh, they'd do more than that. <clears throat> Ain't a, I believe it'll do a thousand pounds in a half hour. Um, it all depends on how much gas you give that tractor and how far you open that door. The harder you turn it and the more you, faster you feed it, the more it'll do. I don't feed it that fast, and I run the tractor about half throttle. 
which means it's probably not quite doing 2200 RPMs. It's probably doing 2000. And this system is not idiot proof now. I, I did think about that. You probably need it turning 2200 at full throttle in case the wrong one's running it because the way I have it set up, you could overspeed it. But all my tractors are old. The throttles don't stay where you put them. Most of them stay about half throttle. Anything above that, they fall back anyway. And I don't know how often somebody besides me is going to be running it. So I think I'll be okay. And like I said, my biggest thing was I didn't want the tractor sitting here gagged wide open having to hear it. This thing's already loud. It sounds like an airplane. And then you put an old 50 model tractor sitting here two foot from it. At least when you had the flat belt, it was off over yonder somewhere. But I think that's about all I can tell you that would help you. They were the main questions I had that I couldn't get answered. But in terms of counterclockwise, I think most of the research did. I had somebody do it for me, a friend of mine done it for me. And then we had to reverse engineer the belt pulley size on the Super A because they told us they run it with a Super A and how fast that turns, which is 1,100 RPMs in case you ever need to know. A belt drive pulley on a, on a farm all is 1,100 RPMs. And then they got an 8, a 9, a 10 inch pulley, I think. And the most popular was the 8. So we figured an 8 inch pulley, 1100 RPMs. That's how fast it was turning. So we had to go with a 20 because we're at a 540 RPM here. We had to go with a 20 and a 3 and a quarter. But I think this setup will work better. And all this was cut out on a plasma table. I want to thank Delco, Tim Del Delco, for that. He was a lot of help. In fact, he, uh, he was, uh, couldn't have done it without him. Uh, if you've been watching this, you know I'm sick. I got a little something wrong with me and I can't weld. One of the side effects of that is I can't weld right now. So if he hadn't helped me weld a little bit of it together, I managed to get the skid welded up and then I passed out trying to weld the frame on, which is frustrating when you weld for a living and then you can't weld. That's just, it's, it's worse. But maybe that'll help you a little bit. Um, appreciate you watching. And I would rec highly recommend it if you're trying to make feed. The hammer mill is probably the best option if you have something to turn. And you can put an electric motor on them. I see a lot of them done that way. I don't like. I don't see a problem with that. But I'd rather use some gasoline power and turn it with something I already have. The power unit, putting a power unit on, is probably the most problematic because you have to have some sort. So, some kind of cut system or a way to take the tension off the belt. And we thought about doing that with a clutch and a, a chain drive and it would have been, a, the drive would have been cheaper and I probably could have got a motor for free. But this was about the most economical way to do it. And I will tell you, it was still $500. All of this was about $500. By the time I bought the pulleys, had that shaft made, I had to have the machine shop make that shaft. Um, donated steel and donated time for somebody else it was still five hundred dollars just depends on how much of it you do yourself how much you have to pay somebody to do i guess and we don't have a plasma table so i still would have had those plates made or cut them out with a torch and let them be ragged looking i do some pretty good work with a torch but i can't make it look like that then. <coughs> and that's something else too with you if you want some ornamental stuff cut out <coughs> Tim over there at Delco, they do ornamental stuff on that plasma table, signs, and all these signs you see around here he made, and they do production work, so if you own a big company, you need somebody to make a thousand or two thousand or three thousand or something, give them a call. Uh, or, or get up with me and I'll get you up with them. <coughs> <coughs> uh, anyway, get where I can't talk, so I appreciate y'all watching. I hope this will help you, and I'll see y'all later.